Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astros Recap. David Artis here. Break things down for you. Another Sunday, another week in the books. In fact, it's 11.03 p.m. Sunday night, June 20th, 2021, of course. So, um, still working with this setup. It's still a work in progress. I have my mic sort of leaned up against this tripod. Um, it might fall as we move. I've been trying to work through some issues here, so uh, just bear with me if things aren't um, perfect here. Uh, I'm trying to lift up the mic a little bit because the sound quality is not as good. I'll just talk a little bit louder tonight, but we'll we'll see how this works for now. But uh, again, same setup as last week. Just really only big difference is the mirror right over here. So um, other than that, most of the background looks the same. Uh, I'm doing my computer here is on the nightstand which is lower to the ground than my dresser I mentioned this last week of course but so the camera's more directed going up more so than just straight at me uh, the dresser I used to have was perfect height with the chair that I sit in here so um, obviously uh, if things look a little bit different just know that this isn't my usual table and hopefully I'll get into a better system as the weeks go on here, but um, anyway, Astros baseball very good this week, six and zero. Uh, they won all games, so uh, definitely better than what I would have hoped for. You know, uh, towards the end of the podcast, I usually try to give you my prediction or my hopes for the week. Obviously, I would have said four and two. You know, if you can, you really should win both games against the Rangers, but I would have taken a split if that was the case with Chicago, who was the best record. Yeah, Tampa Bay had that best record in the AL for a while there, but going into this four-game set with Chicago, Tampa Bay lost a few few games in a row there, so Chicago had the best record. Uh, by the end of the week, now we actually have it, which is crazy to think about. I never would have thought that, you know, going into this week on Tuesday, the Astros, I mean, obviously the A's had a two-game lead. You had the Red Sox, you had the Rays, you had the White Sox. Um, you had... I mean, you had all these teams that were better than them, record-wise, and now by the end of it, the Astros actually stand alone with the best record in the American League. It's pretty astonishing, to say the least. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised, borderline shocked, that the Astros are as good as they are right now because they do have one big glaring weakness, but they've their, their offense, their hitters right now are relentless. It's just it's a total slugfest right now, and if you can't score... You know, seven, eight runs a game, you really don't have a chance. That's almost what it feels like right now. I don't want to get ahead of myself. The Astros are now 15 games over 500. Uh, they're 43 and 28, which is good enough to have the best record in the American League. Um, the best record in all of baseball is the San Francisco Giants. They're 20 games over 500. They're like 46 and 26 or something along those lines. But uh, the Astros, I mean, you, <laughs> Undefeated week, really can't complain there. Their toughest games were on Tuesday against the Rangers and then on Friday against the um, yeah White Sox. So both those games, I mean, the, the, the Tuesday game, we really shouldn't lose games to the Rangers. Obviously, we swept them in a four-game set at home earlier this year. And then we go to Texas and get swept in a three-game set. So coming back home to play them, where we play them better was sort of, uh, uh, you know, I, the, the Rangers are terrible. As I got my phone here, and um, I mean, let me just look at this real quick. The Rangers are last in our division. They're 25 and 46, well, six in a row. I mean, they're not they're not a good team. So that should be a team that you take care of pretty easily, uh, which we did in the first series. I mean, we swept them in a four-game set at home, but you know, going on the road. At Arlington, where we lost all three. Coming back home to play them this time was important for us to take not one but both short, weird two games set with them. But the Monday game was, you know, Lance McCullers. Actually, it was a Tuesday, so off day Monday. Uh, they start Tuesday, start of a 20 game stretch with no days off. So, um, but yeah, I mean, they, uh, the the uh, Rangers scored a single run in the fourth and fifth. And of course, you know the Astros. Uh, it was two to one. Yeah, Kyle Gibson took care of the Astros pretty good there. 
Um, he's their best pitcher. Uh, he's probably a trade, you, you know, going to be on the trade market come the deadline, but um, he's been good for him pretty much all year. And the Astros' numbers historically against him aren't good either. Uh, they did score a run on a sack fly hit by Yuli Gurriel after the uh, Rangers scored two runs on a Joey Gallo or a RBI double and a Joey Gallo RBI walk. So, um, who started this game here? So Lance McCullers, back from injury, lasted only four and a third. He wasn't a pitch count, so uh, there's that to, to talk about. But um, he threw 77 pitches, 40 strikes, 37 balls. That's about right. Uh, his ratio when it comes to strikes and balls are going to be pretty close because that's just the pitcher he is. Uh, but he got brought out, and they brought in Blake Taylor. This was after the Rangers had a one nothing lead. And Blake Taylor comes in out of the bullpen with the bases low to two outs, and he walks Joey Gallo on four pitches and makes the score two to nothing. Uh, that's unacceptable. You can't, as a left-handed reliever, come in to face a left-handed hitter and throw four straight balls with the bases loaded. That just can't happen. Uh, luckily, it did get out of the inning there, but that's the big issue that I go back to. Our relievers tend to come in, especially when there's runners on base, and they tend to walk a lot of players. It's like it always like Brooks Raley is another good example. Our other lefty in the bullpen, who always walks the first hitter or falls behind the first hitter, forced, forced to throw a strike, and he gets hit for a base hit, or he just misses the zone completely and ends up walking a guy. And don't even get me, get me started with Enoli Paredes, because we know what he does um, time and time again um, out of the bullpen. So anyway, but obviously didn't hurt the Astros. They do score a run on that Yuli Gurriel, RBI um, sack fly there. Uh, two outs, bottom of the ninth. The Astros down a run. Carlos Correa comes up huge, opposite field home run. So I'm, I'm gonna give Carlos Correa a lot of credit this week. He's been raising that average as as I've mentioned in the past, and we'll look at it here in a little bit. But he's been coming up big for this team. So I give Correa a lot of credit. Has not gone on the DL. We'll knock on wood for that. Um, or I should say the IL. Um, but Correa's done good thus far. So, um, well, he started terrible, but he's brought the average up, and he's he's had some big hits. But, yeah, with two outs, two strikes, bottom half of the ninth, down a run, and him hitting the home run to tie it was big. Presley gets the uh, top half of the tenth there. He actually um, gets two outs and strands that runner at second, at least at that point in time, but then gives up a line drive the other way. Uh, off Bregman's glove, it trickles into the outfield, and the runner comes around to score. So we go to the bottom half of the tenth down a run. Now the Astros got helped because the umpire missed like two clear as day strikes that were pretty. Uh, I mean, they were easily strikes. I mean, they, well, there's no question about it. And I don't know what the umpire was doing, but he called them balls. So the reliever they brought in, can't remember his name off the top of my head here. I'll just go to the box score here. It was um, so Josh Spores blew the save, giving up that home run to Correa, and then let's see here. Demarcus Evans is the guy who couldn't throw strikes, but again, the umpire really didn't help him at all. There was. Like I mentioned, two strikes that were easy strikes that he missed. So, you know, our leadoff runner at second, I think, was McCormick at the time. I actually want to go through this here because this is the important part of the game. Um, let's see here. i got to pick up the summary and then all plays and scroll all the way down here. So <laughs> give me a quick second here as I do so. So... Yeah, so McCormick starts that, that bottom half of the tenth there on second base with the extra inning rules there. And then Miles Stroll, who's up here, 
walks. That was a pretty legitimate walk, I feel like. He, uh, you know, I think he worked, I, I, I don't know the exact pitch count here. Can't see that, but he walks. He had runners at first and second. Jason Castro pinches, pinch hits here for Jason, or Jason Castro pinch hits for Martin Maldonado. This is the at bat where the umpire missed two clear strikes and he called them balls. So Castro was walking. It was a 3 2 pitch and Castro took it right down the middle. And I have no idea why the umpire called that a ball, but he did. I guess you'll take it as an Astros fan, but I could see uh, the disappointment and the anger from the Rangers side on that. Uh, so that loaded the bases. And then Altuve hits the grand slam to win it. So, um, yeah, it's good to get get the win there. I mean, obviously it's the Rangers. You should win those games. I don't care if you're at home or away. But getting the win there was big. And then, you know, Wednesday's game wasn't really in doubt at all. They won it eight to four. So, um, yeah, this phone really really ticks me off when it doesn't want to load. And then I have to end up finding another way to get back to this game. But yeah, we won this game pretty easily, eight to four. So uh, I'm trying to think who pitched this game. It's always tough. I want to say Fromber Valdez, but I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, one thing I'll talk about Tuesday is this loads. Oda Rizzi did come out. So after Taylor got through that, that fifth inning, Oda Rizzi went the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, and he didn't allow any runs. Um, he was fantastic out of the bullpen, so... Oda Rizzi, a guy I've continued to talk about who I think will be big for us to give you his line actually in this game here. Um, he goes four innings, two hits, no runs, no walks, struck out three. He was a big part of bridging that gap. So Oda Rizzi, your Javier are your two long guys. Oda Rizzi actually gets the start tomorrow. Um, I thought Odorizzi would be available out of the bullpen today for McCullers, but that was not the case. So Odorizzi is in line to get that start. Wednesday's game, I just had it. Now it's loading again, so this stupid phone. But Wednesday's game, like I said, 8-4. to four. Uh, The Astros had four, one in the first, three in the second. They're up 4 nothing early, so they sort of rode that to victory there. As Granke was okay, not great. Um... There was a mistake here by Dusty Baker in this game. I believe it was the sixth inning where Granke was into a little bit of a jam there. Face Joey Gallo. So, I mean, this is a... Granke sort of got... T- he got the win in the game. He's 7-2 and two in the year, so that's good. But he had only allowed one earned run. I, I have no idea what Dusty Baker thinks in these situations. This is, it, this is the mind-boggling part to me. So he's in trouble here in the sixth inning, right? got one out. Joey Gallo comes up. He strikes him out. He strikes out Joey Gallo. He's got two outs. He's got like the bases loaded, runners on second and third, something like that. And he's at 89 pitches. And Dusty Baker, who's got Brooks Raley warming up, says, I'll go to Brooks Raley here to try to get the final out of the inning, which was a stupid decision. First of all, you bring in Brooks Raley, who's not even coming in to face a lefty. That's how you usually validate that decision. You bring in your lefty to face the lefty to get the matchup in your favor. So to speak, you bring so, so Granky's at 89 pitches. He just struck out a hitter. He's labored a little bit, I guess, not really, but you know, give Granky the right to get out of this inning, and then I mean, he's got 89 pitches. So not only do you bring in Rayleigh, which was a bad decision, no matter who he's facing, but you bring him in to face a righty, which makes zero sense. He gives up a base hit, two runs score, and of course, most of those runs are on Zach Greinke's line. Now, Greinke gets the win, but the ERA goes up, which isn't good. So the ERA at 3.74, which isn't terrible. In fact, that's probably worst of all of our pitchers right now. But Greinke, I mean, it didn't cost him because they scored eight runs. And then, you know, Javier came in, got two innings in. He did walk a batter, gave him an earned run, so he wasn't great, but, you know, he gets the hold. And Stanek actually walked a guy in the ninth inning but got through it. No runs, no hits. 
Um, and again, we win that we win that game, so not not a huge deal there. Um, the big news here is Bregman got hurt, so running to first base, he um, came up gimpy a little bit halfway up the first base line. Apparently, pulled the quad. It's a quad strain. He's on the IL, and Bregman will be out for a lengthy amount of time, uh, or so I've heard. So I, I don't know the. I know it's his quad. I'm a guess a strain, but he's not going to be on the field for a while here. So uh, they'll have interesting decisions with third base. Um, obviously, you have Robel Garcia, who's done pretty well. They've been okay with him. Right now, it would be a good time to have Alemis Diaz. Of course, he fractured his hand, so he's on the IL. So it kind of sucks that you don't have him because he would definitely be the guy that would fill in and could play anywhere you'd want him to. I think in that situation, they'd probably move Gurriel to third, who can play third. He's played third in the past. Um, not much with the Astros, but growing up playing baseball, he was, I think he was a third baseman. So, uh, But you don't have Diaz. Uh, Bregman's out. You'll keep Correa at sh shortstop. You'll have Robel Garcia. Uh, you'll have, they brought up Abraham Toro. I think I've made my thoughts clear on how I feel about him. But he's actually done well in the games I've watched. He got called up, I believe, for a Thursday's game. And he, he hit a home run and had a two-run single. And today he had like four hits. So Toro's been good. But again, I need to see more of a sample size before I give him credit. I'd like to see Robo, uh, Robel Garcia get a lot more playing time. And Taylor Jones, for some odd reason, is still up here. But even he's been... He was good today. All of our hitters really don't don't miss a beat. It just seems like it doesn't matter where you put our hitters. Jeff Blum, I think, or Todd Callis brought this up during the broadcast today. Really, after Altuve leads off, Dusty's tried a bunch of different combinations. They all seem to work right now. So it's, it doesn't really matter who puts two through nine. It's all working out. And we're getting production from the bottom of the order. Really, whoever's in the lineup steps up and does, you know, it's next man up mentality. But that's the way it's been so uh, at least recently here. So, but yeah, uh, that was the bad news I guess in Wednesday's game. But the Astros got the win. The Dusty Baker not smart decision making, bringing Rayleigh in. Javier and Stanek uh, closed the door there, but you had a lot of runs to work with. So there's that. Thursday's game I actually went to this game. Astros they didn't just beat the White Sox. They didn't just sweep them. They they absolutely just. They'd shoot them up and spit them out. I mean, they, they just stomped on this team. It wasn't even – like, Friday was the close game. But they went today – or Thursday, 10-2. to Saturday, 7-3, and today, 8-2. to I mean, the White Sox didn't even – this was a good team coming in. Now, uh, I don't they, – they had some injuries they were dealing with. But, again, we've been without Bregman for this entire series. And they've been without Kyle Tucker, who's on the IL with the safety – the protocols, health and safety protocols, the COVID, the coronavirus type. He should be back tomorrow, uh, Tucker. If not, definitely by Tuesday. So uh, Garrett Stubbs, who's up here now, will probably be sent back down. They did get Castro back uh, the Tuesday game against the Rangers. But they, they just they, they pummeled the White Sox, which was, yeah, I was shocked. I mean, the, 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 the White Sox made numerous errors. I mean, they just they were sloppy defensively. Their pitchers, supposedly, had good win-loss records. ERAs were pretty good. Uh, Rodon was good, who pitched the Friday game, but Dylan Cease on Thursday, we, we, we hit him well. Uh, Saturday was um, Lance Lynn, who's been their stud starter. We bounced on him pretty easily. And then today, Dallas Keiko, we hit all of them pretty well. And they were out of the games early. In fact, their bullpen seemed like they would pitch more innings than their starters this series. I'm not going to go dive into every single game here, but obviously Thursday, you know, Urquidy hung in there. He gave up the two runs, but he got through six, seven innings. He did a good job there. Um, fr Friday, I actually missed Friday's game, but this was – Luis Garcia start. And this was actually an important start because Garcia, if we remember, 
he pitched the Saturday when they played the Twins and actually had his first bad start in like six, seven, really his worst start of the year. He gave up four runs. But he bounced back and only gave up one run, suffered the no decision, but the Astros walked it off with the Jordan Alvarez walk-off double there. But, yeah, Garcia bounced back, and he's still amazing. Yeah, he's been great. And then on Saturday you get um, – who pitched on Saturday now? I'm drawing a blank. Oh, it was Valdez. Valdez was, again, great. He went seven innings, gave up one, two runs. So uh, Valdez is 4-0 after his no decision to start the year. He's won all of his games. So Valdez has been great, picking up right where he left off last year. And then today you had McCullers. Uh, gives up two runs, six innings. Did an okay job. But, again, the offense, when you score ten and seven and eight runs, you're – going to feel pretty good about your chances and the offense right now it's just been great and like I mentioned everybody who just goes into the lineup whether they're a regular or not is is doing a great job but Carlos Correa right now is sort of the offensive MVP and he's, he's showing it you know got off to a terrible start was hitting 230 he was on my list I will take him off that list now um, didn't really talk about the list a whole lot last last week but Astros have won, you know, now six straight series. Uh, they've won seven games in a row. So now they go into Baltimore to play three, and they then they go to Detroit to play four. So, um, yeah, everything's been good. I mean, <laughs> I can't be upset. They just swept the the White Sox four game set. Uh, swept the Rangers in a two game set, seven in a row, seven wins. I thought today's game was important because we talk about the whole. Astros have had the opportunity to sweep a lot of teams this year, just haven't been able to you know, win that final game of the series, but today they were able to do it, so it was nice to get the sweep uh, and, you know, head out on the road feeling very good about the team right now. So, yeah, I mean, almost speechless with how well they've played. I mean, we know their offense is good. Maybe not, we didn't think they'd be this good, but they're 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 doing incredible, and... Um, our starters are great, you know, like them all, really. I mean, a lot of teams, you, you get to your third, fourth, fifth starter, there's usually you know, two guys there that, you know, you, you have issues with. The Astros don't really have that problem now. They don't have a bona fide ace in the rotation, unless you want to say Valdez is that guy. It's, he's only made five starts this year, so it's kind of quick to, to do that. But, you know, Granke's sort of the uh, veteran. Um, but, I mean, there's no there's no weak link in that rotation. In fact, if you were to pick one guy, it'd be Lance McCullers. I think that that's, that's clear. Um, I mean, Oda Rizzi gets the start tomorrow. He's got an ERA. He, he brought it down after that you know, Tuesday game to under six. We'll see what he gives us tomorrow. But, again, I still have high hopes for Oda Rizzi to, to, to have a good, good season. I think by the end of the year, I think his numbers will be pretty solid. Uh, whether he's going to be more of a starter or a reliever, we'll find out. Time will only tell, but uh, I still have a lot of faith in Oda Rizzi. And then you got Javier out of the bullpen, so, I mean, we'll see. The Astros probably won't go with a six-man rotation, so, again, I've talked about moving McCullers to the bullpen. It won't happen. Uh, it'll probably be Oda Rizzi, but Oda Rizzi will be starting. Again, the Astros are in the midst of, you know, 20 straight games without the day off, so uh, going with the six-man rotation, you know, if you want to give McCullers a few, you know, rest days or skip him in the rotation a few times, use Oda Rizzi. The Astros have a lot of uh, leeway there with their starters and using guys that, you know, uh, they, don't have that, they don't have that big an issue. It's just the back end of the bullpen bridging the gap, which the Astros have been avoiding because they jump out and, you know, they, they, you know, put teams in a big hole early, and they have multiple run leads going into late innings. So I'm trying to think there. So, you know, I covered the Bregman injury. Tucker should be back. No news on Eloy Paredes. Not that that really matters. Brian Abreu, who apparently got hurt shagging fly balls during batting practice. Haven't heard an update on him. He's been out about two and a half weeks now. 
two and a half, three weeks. I don't know what his update is. I don't know how severe his injury was. I didn't think it was that severe, but haven't heard any news. But again, you know, when it comes to Andre Scrub, who's back in AAA, Enoli Paredes and Brian Abreu are three guys I don't care to ever see pitch for this team in a meaningful spot the rest of the year. So that's where I'm there. I'm there. Uh, you got Blake Taylor and Brooks Raley as your lefty, or yeah, your lefty relievers. Javier's a long man. You have Stanek. Stanek's had a few good outings in a row. He struggled there for a little bit, so Stanek's looked a little better. And of course, no issues with Presley. Yeah, I'm trying to think who else you got in that bullpen right now. Ralph Garza Jr.'s had a few appearances. Pretty good. Uh, he's probably not going to see any meaningful uh, time. But, you know, we had some pitchers with mop-up duty here. So, but, every, yeah, I mean, they're... They're, they're playing as well as you could have help, hoped right now. So, Oakland, who had won seven in a row, lost their last two games. So the Astros actually now are technically tied for first place, but they are percentage points ahead of Oakland. So, um the Astros have a favorable schedule here. Obviously, they've won seven in a row. I'm not going to, you know, say they'll go 7-0 and this week. But they do play Baltimore for three. And then they go to Detroit. And Detroit's a team that we owe some payback. Uh, we'll be looking for some payback after they swept this early uh, back at Minute Maid Park. So that'll be sort of a revenge series uh, for these seven games on the road. And Baltimore, they've been uh, atrocious this year. So... Another team we should beat up on. Uh, but we'll ride the winning streak here as long as we can. And then, you know, it's always important when you do lose that first game, which will happen at some point, to bounce right back. That's one thing. So winning streaks are fun to be a part of, of course. Obviously, the Ashes only won seven in a row, so it's not like they're riding some huge winning streak here. I think you start thinking about the streak when you get to eight, nine, ten wins is usually that line where you start. It's in your heads. you got to keep winning here. But when the Astros do lose, I've always thought with any winning streak, it's important to bounce back the next day or the next game and actually, you know, go back to your winning ways. So uh, whenever the Astros lose, that'll be important. But yeah, so we'll, you know, we've got seven games this week. Uh, we'll have seven games the following week. So like I said, in the midst of 20 uh, consecutive days without a day off, so... Coming up here on 28 Minutes, so I'll wrap things up there. Uh, love to hear your comments section below. Like this video, share it with your friends, hit that subscribe button, all that good stuff on YouTube. And I'll talk to you next week, Sunday night, same time, same place. We'll see you then.